But right now, it's my privilege and pleasure to welcome today our very special chief guest, the Honorable Union Minister for Tourism, Culture and Development of Northeastern Region, Shri G. Kishan Reddy Ji. And we have secretaries from different ministries, including our own secretary as the host secretary for the event today. And we'll meander and show you incredible India as we go along in its various dimensions. And therefore, wishing all of you a very special day from Incredible India, all the stories of Incredible India and Incredible Indians as we go along on the National Tourism Day. And we are, of course, hoping that all of you are keeping safe, keeping healthy, wearing your mask, keeping the social distancing and getting vaccinated. Now, why is tourism so very special in India? I must tell you before we move on to the program that in India in the last six years, it's been heartening to see the organized efforts of the government actually taking India from the rank of 65 in 2014 to 34 in 2019 in the Travel and Tourism Competitiveness Index of the World Economic Forum. The foreign tourist arrivals in India just before COVID, of course, COVID has been playing the blip, but the foreign tourist arrivals in India registered a growth of 7.3% from 2014 to 2019. It's also a sector that brings employment to people and almost 15% uh, citizens of our country have direct and indirect employment in the sectors of travel, tourism and hospitality. It's a sector that's growing. It's a sector of incredible opportunities. And what are those opportunities? And that's why we have very different people coming in from different ministries, secretaries leading their departments and bringing to us the opportunities that Incredible India brings today. At this juncture, I would like to welcome Shri Arvind Singh Ji, who is Secretary Tourism, Government of India, for his opening remarks. Mr. Singh is an officer of the 1988 batch of the Maharashtra Kada. He's a student of economics, so he understands the economics of tourism really well. I can tell you guys that. He has also worked in various parts of Maharashtra. He's worked in central government at different levels before handling the current portfolio. In fact, just before he came in here, he was the chairman for the Airport Authority of India. And that's a crucial sector for us because what is tourism without travel? So he was handling that critical portfolio and brings in a lot of knowledge from there. And interestingly, before just before that, he was also the Minister of Economic at the Embassy of India in Japan. Again, a tremendous uh, learning which benefits all of us here in the ministry. And Mr. Singh has also attended numerous training courses, including training courses at Geneva and Harvard. Sir, welcome, and we are waiting for your opening remarks on the National Tourism Day 2022. So, wishing everyone a very happy National Tourism Day. At the outset, uh, I take this opportunity to welcome Sri G. Krishan Reddy, Honorable Minister for Tourism, Culture, and Dona. Padma Bhushan Sri Anand Mahindra, Chairman Mahindra Group, Colonel Manoj Keshwar from Atulya Ganga Parikrama, and my esteemed colleagues from Government of India, Srimati Leena Nandan, Secretary Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change, Sri Govind Mohan, Secretary Ministry of Culture, Sri Upendra Prasad Singh, Secretary Ministry of Textiles, and Sri G. Ashok Kumar, Director General of the National Ganga Mission, to celebrate today's National Tourism Day 2022. Ladies and gentlemen, tourism has experienced continuous growth and diversification over the decades to become one of the fastest growing economic sectors of the world. Today, the business volume of tourism equals or even surpasses that of oil exports, food products or automobiles. Tourism has a huge multiplier effect, not only in terms of creating employment generation at the grassroots level, but also due to its socioeconomic impact across communities. These dynamics have turned tourism into a key driver for social economic progress. It is also a great binder and has created a feeling of brotherhood among different nations and helped develop better understanding of different cultures. In India, the tourism sector has emerged as one of the key drivers of economic growth. Tourism promotes national integration and makes citizens aware of the beauty and rich cultural heritage of our great nation. It also promotes inter-regional relationships and encourages cultural pursuits by providing support to local handicrafts. Pochampali, as we are aware, has been awarded 
as one of the best villages for tourism by the UNWTO, that is the World Tourism Organization for the year 2021. And it has inspired us to celebrate the National Tourism Day 2022, recognizing rural and community-centric tourism. As we all know, rural communities are custodians of indigenous natural and cultural heritage, and also have an inherent ability to coexist with natural ecosystems. It is important at this juncture that rural communities and landscapes are leveraged to develop and promote sustainable tourism development models. In a country as diverse as India, and where a significant number of people are deeply rooted in villages, it is both an opportunity as well as necessity that tourism develops itself and in turn develops the local rural communities. Various art forms, they, whether they be music, dance, arts and crafts, textiles, cuisine, cultural constructs, all have their roots in villages, and that's what makes us unique and indeed incredible. We have seen how the textile products of Pochampali and the art forms of places like Raghurajpur have become major tourism attraction, both for domestic and international tourists. So it is essential that such models are replicated in other parts of the country to bring the economic benefits of tourism to local communities, to generate employment, and to bridge the cultural divide between urban and rural spaces. Tourism in the last two years has suffered the world over, including in our country, due to the ongoing pandemic. We are going through a third wave, which the country has been able to tackle well due to our very successful vaccination program. While international tourism will take some time to start, domestic tourism has been doing fairly well and we are expecting that businesses will reach their normal levels you know notwithstanding the current blip will reach its normal level very shortly to conclude i would like to wish everyone good health and reassure all stakeholders and participants that the government of india is with you and we join hands to restart and reboot tourism it is important that development through tourism is sustainable responsible and inclusive and i'm confident that if you all join hands we can emerge stronger and more resilient to cope with the challenges that confront us. I once again wish you all a very happy National Tourism Day and hope to see the tourism sector set again on a path of recovery to reach even greater heights. Thank you, Jai Hind. Thank you, sir, for setting the context and also setting the stage. And at this juncture, once again, Rashtriya Paryatan Divas 2022. What is so special about Incredible India? It, the textiles of India is something that we are going to showcase the next because experiential tourism, dear friends, has emerged as a major segment across the world. And India, truly incredible in its various tangible and intangible traditions, is a country that is, you cannot, they say, finish seeing everything that India offers in one lifetime. And how true that is. We shall show you as we go along the program, but bringing to us the story of textiles and how textiles of India, which are part of our history right from the Indus Valley civilization down till now, and the use of 300 plus natural plants for colors and dyes, where you get these kind of traditions anywhere in the world. And bringing therefore that splendor of textiles today with us is the Secretary Textiles Government of India, Shri Upendra Prasad Singh Ji. Welcome, sir. <clears throat> and sir is from the 1985 batch of the Indian Administrative Service. He's from the Urissa Kader, and that's a state for such a strong text textile tradition. So it's a pleasure to have you with us, sir. He's a graduate and a postgraduate in engineering from the IIT Kanpur. After that, held various positions in the state government and in the central government, in the water resources and river development, in petroleum, natural gas, and a lot of other portfolios. So he is enriched with a lot of multidimensional understanding when today he heads the textile ministry. And we look forward to your <clears throat> sir, experiences and how do you see textiles and tourism coming together? Uh, thank you very much. Uh, good morning to everyone. Uh, Honorable Minister Jeep Reddy Ji, uh, Anna Mahindra Ji, Chairman Mahindra Group, uh, my colleagues, speakers, uh, Secretary of Culture Arvind Singh, uh, Secretary of Forest and Environment Lina Nandan, uh, Secretary of Culture Gobind Mohan, uh, my colleague G. Ashok Kumar, Director General National Mission for Clean Ganga, Colonel Manoj Keshwar Ji. DJ Tourism and Additional Digital Tourism, 
friends. Uh, first of all, a very warm greetings to all of you on this uh, very important occasion of uh, World Tourism Day. Uh, as we all know, Indian handloom and handicrafts represent a very rich cultural heritage of our country. No other country in the world has the kind of richness that we have in our weaves and crafts. Be it Ikat from Orissa, be it a Kalamkari from Andhra Pradesh, a Brocade from Uttar Pradesh, Ajarak from Gujarat, Kanjibura from Tamil Nadu, Jamdani from West Bengal, the list will go on actually. The rich Indian tradition of cultural and handicrafts and tourism go together. They go hand in hand. In fact, they are the natural allies. That is why when we look at the uh, a tourist map of India, we see a lot of handloom clusters around the popular tourist destinations. You, for example, take the case of Varanasi or Kanchipuram or Sirdi, etc. Uh, they, they, they are very, not only a very important tourist destinations, they are very important clusters as far as the handloom is concerned. So while handlooms and handicrafts enriches one's travel experience, it is also true that travels leaves their imprint on our weaves and crafts. Many of our weaving techniques, including that of Jamdani, have come in from other parts of the, of the world. Uh, I just talked about the Ikat of Urissa. In fact, Ikat of Urissa is an outcome of Bali Jatra. If you look at the Ajrak art of Kutch, the design of eight-pointed star and the brilliant tessellation is what you would find in Alhambra of Spain and Ijnik tiles of Turkey. This is also true of our handicrafts. Be it the Vidri wear of Champa, uh, Vidri wear or Channa Patna toys of Karnataka or Binakari of Varanasi, all of them have been print of art traveling across borders to spread far and wide. We have always adopted techniques and made them of our own. In order to promote crafts based tourism, Ministry of Textile is implementing a scheme called Craft Tourism Village. So far, we have already taken up 15 such craft tourism villages. They include, which uh, Arvind also spoke, they include Raghurajpur mm, uh, near Puri, uh, which is known for Patachitra painting, or the Kanihama in Jain Kashmir, which is known for Pasmina and Kani shawls. Our ministry is keen to further collaborate with Fuji Ministry and start the concepts, concept of experiential tourism in a big way. Uh, if we can, uh, using of course craft as a medium. medium. It would be amazing to work out circuits where travelers can live in craft villages of Kutch or Kashmir and learn embroidery or uh, paper mache. Honorable Prime Minister has always been a great advocate of handlooms, uh, giving us fabulous mantras of vocal for local and uh, my handloom, my pride. If this can be taken to the world via craft tourism, it will be a free collaboration during Ajadi Gamrit Mahotsav. Uh, friends, I uh, once again wish you all the best on World Tourism Day and I look forward to working very closely, not only with the Ministry of uh, Tourism Government of India, but with the tourism departments of all the states. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. So tourism and craft coming together as craft villages and a lot of other museums. So these are exciting times, clearly. And for everyone listening in here, I'm sure you see a huge opportunity of how textiles and tourism come together. Thank you very much, sir. And moving forward, another crucial and a very relevant for India, a country which is steeped in heritage, both the built heritage and the intangible heritage and various cultural forms. You are spoiled for choice in our country, whether it comes to languages, whether it comes to dance forms, music forms, theater forms, the tangible and intangible UNESCO heritage sites and listings, it, does, it just goes on and on. And that's why, viewers, we are incredible India. And bringing to us, how do we leverage, how do we bring together, what is the story of culture? And how does culture work for tourism in India? Is Secretary Tourism Government of uh, Secretary Culture, uh, Government of India, Shri Govind Mohanji. Govind right. Mohanji, welcome, right. sir. And uh, we look forward to your address to us. But before that, I'm going to tell the viewers the very extensive experience that Shri Mohan brings amidst us here today. He is from the 1989 batch of the IAS. He belongs to the Sikkim Kader, which incidentally is the only organic state of India. And it is a, also a state that is right up there for homestays, which is a very crucial part of tourism. But today he represents culture. He's also uh, a 
tuned off the IIM. So he went to the IIM Ahmedabad and I'm sure he's bringing in a lot of competencies from there as he takes the culture ministry forward. He's an engineer before that. He's worked in the ministries of finance and has handled very interesting portfolios as he has also been the minister economic in the Indian embassy at Washington. He's also been in the cabinet secretariat. He's handled a lot of public private partnership issues in the PPPs and FDIs in the DEA. And they say that, uh, you know, you should normally have an apple a day to keep the doctor away. In Mr. Mohan's case, he can't do that because his wife is a doctor. So he does not need to have an apple a day. Welcome, sir. And we look forward to your thoughts on how does culture leverage tourism for our incredible India. Thank you, Rupendra Ji. Uh, Honorable Minister for Tourism, Culture and Donor, uh, Honorable Sri G. Kishan Reddy Ji. My senior colleagues, Shri Arvind Singh Ji, Secretary of Tourism, Shri Upen Singh Ji, Secretary in the Ministry of Textiles, uh, Shri Mati Leena Nandan Ji, Secretary in the Ministry of Environment Forest, uh, Kamla Vardhan, my, uh, my colleague who's uh, DG Tourism, Ashok Kumar, Director of the National Ganga Mission, uh, friends, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, at the outset, I would like to congratulate the Ministry of Tourism for having, even in very trying circumstances, gone ahead and organized this event on the National Tourism Day, which is an event of the Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsav program that is currently going on in the country. And uh, it's a matter of pride for us in the Culture Ministry that the Ministry of Tourism has organized this program, uh, albeit in a virtual mode, but still with a large element of Jan Bhagidari. So I congratulate the Ministry of Tourism for that. Coming to my ministry, the topic given to me is the inherent linkages between culture and tourism, and I wish to devote some time on that. Uh, as most of our viewers would be aware, India is a country whose significant point of projection to the world is its culture. This is a culture that goes back at least 5,000 years, so the first uh, available archaeological evidences from the Indus Valley civilization go back at least to 3000 BC. And if we were to extend that civilization beyond that, we could possibly be looking at a 10,000 year old civilization today, which is clearly the oldest and the most valuable of all the civilizations which archaeology and history has unearthed so far. So we are a, 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 a very old civilization. We have also the earliest literary compositions found anywhere in the world. Although they were not written at the time at which they were composed, but the Vedas are, are sort of, I mean, if we even accept the, the view of the historians, they go back to around 2000 BC. So they are about five, 4,000 year old literary tradition. So we have, one of the oldest cultures and all of us know about it. Now, the point is that how do you integrate that culture with tourism? So here we have some ideas which I would like to project to this audience. First of all, if you just look at the archaeological heritage that India has, we have about 4000 protected monuments of the ASI and about 38 UNESCO World Heritage Sites. This is clearly one of the highest number of UNESCO sites anywhere in the world. Apart from that, at a very easy count, we have more than a lakh unprotected monuments, some of which are of ancient heritage, and most of them have immense tourism potential. Now, uh, just to give you some examples, there's Dola Vira, there is the Ajanta Caves, there's the St. Thomas Church, Elora Caves, the Martin Sun Temple, the Temple in Khujrao, the Brihadishwara Temple, the Kutub Minar. All of these are monuments which go back at least 1,000, 1,500, 2,000 years. And they have huge archaeological importance. But besides that, they have a huge tourism importance. On top of that, we have the India is the home 
to some of the greatest philosophies, whether it's Buddhism, whether it's Jainism, whether it's Sikhism, whether it's Sufism. And there are huge number of sites which are associated with these philosophies. The tourism ministry has already incubated the Buddhism circuit. Apart from that, we are also now thinking of having a freedom circuit. We can have circuits around the other philosophies that were given birth to in this great land. And that itself becomes a great point for selling tourism. Many people, if there is a circuit available with good connectivity, not only people who follow that faith, but people otherwise also would have an incentive to visit those places, to see those places, and to learn about those philosophies that were there in this country. We also have in this country a huge heritage of temple architecture. Some of the finest temples, some of the finest religious monuments anywhere in the world were made in this country. Starting from my home state to a city where the world famous Rumtek Monastery is located, I can give you examples of the Sanchi Stupa, the Kedarnath Temple, the Sri Padmanal Swami Temple, the Baha'i House of Worship, the Golden Temple of Amritsar, the Jama Masjid of Delhi, the Jain Temple at Ranakpur, and the Catholic Marian Shrine in Goa. All of these are superb examples of temple architecture, which again have huge tourism value. Coming to some of the more intangible crafts, the music of India. As you are aware, some of the biggest gharanas, as we call them, but essentially institutions of music have found place in India. So going back to the Samaved, coming to the Natya Shastra, then to Dhrupad, Khayal, the gharanas of Agra, Banaras, the Karnatic Museum, the, the gharanas of Patiala, Kirana and Gwalior, all of these have found their place in the pantheon of music globally. All of them are housed in India and all of them have the potential to attract a lot of tourists. The classical dances of India, some of the biggest dance forms anywhere in the world are to be found in India. India also is the repository of the highest numbers of dance forms, including folk and tribal. That again is a tourism opportunity. Linked to that are the visual arts of India, whether it's the rock art, the fresco from the Ajanta caves, the Gond art, the Madhumani paintings, the miniature paintings, the Tanjore paintings, the Patta Chitra, which we are talking about today, the Kalamkari, the worldly paintings. Going to the festivals of India, some of the biggest festivals are celebrated here. Then the crafts of India, the sectary textiles has already spoken about the handloom and handicraft legacy. All of these constitute a huge cultural repository. Now, the only issue is that how do you convert them into a tourism opportunity? How do you add value to them, giving them the sort of the, uh, the importance that they deserve from a tourism point of view, from an economic growth point of view, from a job creation point of view? So that is the challenge. And through the medium of the National Tourism Day, that is an issue on which we need to debate. That's an issue on which we need to find strategies. Tourism Ministry and the Culture Ministry are already working on the prospect of developing 1,000 monuments, maybe through the Monument Mitra scheme, maybe through other schemes, but making these monuments the epicenter of tourism in India, the epicenter of job creation and economic opportunities. So uh, the, the essence of what I was trying to say is that we have one of the oldest cultures. The facets of those cultures are many fold. The attract uh, attraction of those cultural facets is, is, uh, is, I would say, unparalleled anywhere in the world. And the challenge is that how do we integrate them with tourism? How do we integrate them with a value opportunity which can attract a lot of people? And on that, the ministries will continue to work together and find creative solutions so that in the days ahead, in the years ahead, during this Amrit, Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsav, we are able to take that cultural legacy, showcase it to the world, and make it a potential for creative, uh, for the creative economy uh, that uh, India deserves and that India should have. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. So that was Secretary Culture bringing to you the incredible opportunities of incredible India. 
both from the point of view of culture preservation and also in terms of how to make it tourist friendly. Very thought provoking and some very interesting ideas. And indeed, both the ministries have been working together in the past, and I'm sure they should continue to do so as we work together to bring to you the heritage of India and we work together to bring the museums in renewed forms. There is a lot of work happening in that sector. In fact, I must share with all of you that on a direct basis, the Ministry of Tourism in the last few years has invested close to 10,000 odd crores in bringing you tourism infrastructure. But also what's more important because what really drives tourism is civil aviation. And that's where I think we as a country need to be really, really proud that we have more than 140 airports across the country out of which 20 have the capacity to bring in international flights. And we have the second largest highways in India today after the United States of America. So a lot of good things happening and all these are driving and powering tourism in so many ways. So that was a wonderful presentation, sir. And a lot of ideas came through that. I'm sure we should continue the good work that everybody is doing in the Ministry of Culture. At this juncture, I bring in a very different and a very interesting element, which also drives and thrives tourism in India. With more than 101 national parks and with close to, I think, 500, I'm sure I'm wrong because there might even be more, but close to 500 sanctuaries and parks and the kind of flora and the fauna that India has. It was very important for us to bring in the Ministry of Environment, Forest, and climate change and wildlife tourism. Heading this ministry and a critical ministry that works for tourism is Mrs. Lena Nandan. She is the secretary in the ministry and has recently taken over. Mrs. Nandan is an officer of the 1987 badge of the Uttar Pradesh Kada, and she has served in various capacities in both Uttar Pradesh and central government. She has been in the Ministry of Road, Transport and Highways, and of course, she's also been a part of Ministry of Tourism. So I'm sure she shall be weaving a lot of things of tourism as she now heads the Ministry of Environment and Forest. Mrs. Nandan is a graduate in English from uh, Bihar, from Patna University, and went on to her master's in uh, development management from the Asian Institute of Management at Manila, Philippines. She has written two books, the first one titled How to Placate an Angry Naga and Finding One's Feet in the IAS, which she has co-authored with her husband, Shri Jivesh Nandanji. Both the books have been published and the first one by Penguin and the other one by the Wisdom Tree. So clearly she's been doing a lot with herself. Welcome, ma'am. And we look forward to your thoughts on how we should be weaving environment for us as we take in the 21st century India further ahead from the perspective of tourism. Backroom team, can you just check if Mrs. Nandan's uh, link is working? So I think she's experiencing some technical glitch and therefore we'll uh, move on with the program at this juncture and probably she'll join in uh, once again. The link seems to have dropped, but we'll go back to that one later. At this juncture, therefore, I'm going to take you meandering along the beautiful Ganga, Ma Ganga and the so many other rivers of India. India has been known for being a riverine civilization because a lot of our earlier civilizations in all parts of the country have been along the rivers of India, the mighty Brahmaputra, Ma Ganga, Yamuna, Kotavri, Krishna, again in India, you're spoiled for the rivers too. And heading the, uh, the national mission a clean Ganga on development of tourism along River Ganga is um, G. Ashok Kumar. He's the director general there. Ashok belongs to the 91 badge mm -hmm. of the IAS. He's from the Telangana Kader. And it's a pleasure to welcome him uh, here today. Incidentally, Ashok and I had shared Sikkim uh, as a space from the point of view of election that was conducted in 2014. And that was another beautiful state from the tourism perspective. 
Ashok has been doing a tremendous amount of work in the government. He's worked in the civil aviation. He was instrumental in setting up India's Aircraft Accidents Investigation Bureau. He's also a winner of the Telangana Excellence Award in 2018 and the Jal Mitra Award in 2002. He's worked in the uh, sector of sanitation and has taken the initiative for construction of more than 100,000 individual sanitary latrines, has been working on providing daily drinking water and what, what all am I going to read about you, Ashok? That's a lot of things to read about you. <clears throat> so welcome amidst us and we look forward to your story of how are we linking the Ganga to tourism. Uh, thank you, Robin, sir. Uh, thanks for reminding of those uh, days in Sikkim. Uh, uh, Honorable Minister for uh, uh, Tourism, Culture and Donor, Sri G. Krishan Redigaru, uh, my senior colleagues, uh, Sri Upendra uh, Prasad Singh, uh, Secretary, Ministry of Textiles, uh, Sri Aravind Singh, sir, uh, Secretary, Ministry of Tourism, Smith uh, uh, Lina Nandanji, Secretary, Ministry of Environment, Forest and Cultural uh, Climate Change, uh, Sri Govind Mohan, Secretary, Ministry of Culture, Sri Anand Mahendra, Chairman Mahendra Group, Colonel uh, Manoj Keshwar, uh, my close friend, uh, Sri Kamalavadan Rao, DG, Ministry of Tourism, and all the uh, participants in this webinar. My greetings on the occasion of the National Tourism Day 2022. I thank uh, Arvind sir uh, for uh, getting uh, given opportunity to speak in this uh, uh, to function today, because Ganga is a very important aspect for uh, uh, the India and also with the large tourism connect. Uh, Incredible India and uh, Aditi Devo Bhava are the two buzzwords of Indian tourism. What makes uh, Incredible India attractive to Aditi? Each one has a different take because they have different tastes. Uh, with its vast area, ancient history, India has many things to offer to all of them in her reporter. People look for unique experiences, fun and happiness, inner peace, serenity, serendipity, spirituality. Some are attracted to nature, the mystic and the snow-clad mountains, the sun-kissed beaches, biodiversity. Some fall for arts and culture history, heritage, and mythology. Some are interested in adventure sports like trekking, river rafting, wildlife, bees, and cuisines, etc. The Ganga Basin has it all, except the beaches and the sea. Although all rivers are important, Ganga holds a very special place as it symbolizes the collective faith and sentiments and conscience of 1.3 billion people. When it traverses a distance of 2,500 kilometers from Gomuk in Uttarakhand to Ganga Sagar in West Bengal, it offers a treasure of historical legacies, social, cultural, and traditional uh, heritage, ecological diversities, etc., in all the sites that it cuts across. The liver is linked to the Asta of the country. No river in the world can invoke the feeling Gangaji evokes. It is a link with the past, present, and the future. It is a bandhar of mythology, Mahabharata, and Ramana. The towns on the banks are replete with history, old universities, forts, battles, wars, our own freedom movement. We also have Ayurveda, beefs, cuisines, trekking, rafting, adventure sports, a part of it. If these can make heaven and earth, we also have the gateway to the actual heaven, Kashi, Benares, the oldest, uh, the, uh, the longest uh, living civilization in the world, acknowledged even by the saints. So Ganga has a lot of this to offer. But what are the minimum requirements for these Adityas who want to come? They expect. They expect cleanliness, probably good water, good place to stay, good food good guides and good accessibility. That's what Namami Ganga seeks to provide. In 2014, when the government of India launched the Namama Ganga mission for the holistic rejuvenation, restoration, and conservation of Ganga Basin, it adopted a multi-sector approach. 
to achieve these features. The four strategic interventions were the Nirmal Ganga, the unpolluted flow, the Avaral Ganga, the unrestricted flow, and Jen Ganga, People uh, River Connect, and the Gang Ganga, the research policies and knowledge management. Um, we have tried to achieve the, uh, the, the Nirmal Ganga by trying to clean the water, by trying to stop the dirt, uh, the sewage water which is coming in by treating it and putting it in the river. We are also joining hands with the Swachabar mission to keep the uh, uh, river clean from the litter which comes in. As a part of the Artha Ganga, we seek to provide the connect to people and the river and the water in the river. We are pushing for organic and natural farming. We are protecting and reviving biodiversity, both flora and fauna. The Rudraksha trees and the medicinal plants that we are being planted on and protected, the, the dolphins and otters that are being protected under the Namami Ganga are one of the examples of how we are reviving the biodiversity here. We are ensuring good flow of water, preventing sewage and dirt from getting to the river. We develop river fronts. With you all, you expect the flow of people to Ganga because Kump is one of the largest gathering of people and we have very well demonstrated how good water can create a lot of appreciation in that festival. Uh, what we have done, I'll just take two minutes for that. Uh, Mission had uh, sanctioned about 365 projects, got about 30,000 crores till date. And uh, some of these have helped us in getting the Avral and the Nirmal Ganga put in place. This has improved the water quality, the flow of river, and the surrounding riverine ecosystem. This has also helped to boost tourism, which is uh, the, the testimony of which is the success of the big Kumbh Mela in Prayagraj and later with Haridwar. And we also achieved a Class A uh, water status in Haridwar, which is one of the highest uh, water quality in the category. We, under the Jan Ganga component, have established Ganga Museum at uh, Chanti, Chant, uh, Chanti Ghat in Haridwar. And there are other similar museums which have been established to showcase the cultural aspects of Ganga. Uh, the pro, the, we are also setting up museums in Rishikesh and Patna. Uh, we have also developed cards, primitaria, etc. And uh, so that the people, uh, 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 they come to the Ganga uh, uh, at the guards and then do the uh, puja of Ganga, the Arjis, which is also a very major source of tourist attraction. Um, we have also started Jalish Dolphin Safaris and Ganga, River Ganga at six location, and uh, that is also drawing a lot of crowd. We are also done uh, with uh, Durdarshan and Prasad Bharati, a program called Regra Men Ganga which travels a uh, travel series to attract the people on the various uh, aspects of the Ganga. Now, coming to uh, what we are planning to do uh, as part, part of this rural connect and community tourism, we can offer a lot because under the concept of Artha Ganga, conceptualized by the Honorable Prime Minister in the first National Ganga Council meeting, where we are trying to contribute up to 3% of GDP from this bill, uh, five sectoral interventions have been identified, and these include the sustainable agriculture, biodiversity and afforestation, cultural heritage and tourism in inland waterways. So cultural heritage and tourism is a very important part of Arth Ganga. We are planning to do a lot of uh, activities under the Asadi Amrit Mahotsav uh, to connect, to improve our connect with the people by focusing on various aspects of Arth Ganga. Uh, um, our focus in, in tourism would be uh, um, making people connect with the tourism as well as the cultural aspects of things in and around the Ganga Basin and also uh, try to uh, improve the income of the people around the basin. So this will probably uh, help us in getting a better connect with the people. We are also joining hands with uh, Indian water based authorities to develop a floating community jetties uh, and a roll-on, roll-off terminal. So this can be used for boot, uh, boat cruises, et cetera, to help uh, uh, the movement of people across the river and also uh, 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 encourage local tourism. So uh, for the Asadika Amrit Mahotsav, we are planning massive programs along the Ganga Basin. Starting from August 15th, 2022, we are planning uh, programs on 75 uh, towns on Ganga Basin on various themes, vocal for local, arts, weaves, and food, or probably uh, setting up stalls for one, one product exhibitions, local fairs, and even 
a momentary a commentary on the 1857 war of independence because a lot of activities of historical activities were on the banks of the river ganga so ganga committees are there in the district which can take the lead and uh, we have uh, the ganga priories and the connect with the nehru river kendras who have been helping us in uh, in connecting with the people there so with intact we are taken up an exhaustive study of uh, the what are the uh, architectural heritage and intangible cultural heritage and natural heritage along the 15 51 districts of the river and the results have been amazing we have uh, identified very very interesting um, circuit sketch which can be developed around the ganga basin uh, like in varanasi mirzapur prayag region which can be accepted to Kaan, ex extend up to kanpur bihar jharkhand and bengal we have found a list of uh, historical forts for instance in prayagraj chunar baksar uh, chetram mushirabad and other lesser forts Uh, similar uh, similarly there are kunds and temples of historical importance which can be uh, potential for tourism there are uh, singavera singavera pura an archaeological site near prayagraj which is a potential to become a unesco heritage site uh, there are uh, uh, such archaeological sites in purba medinpur vaishali aligarh and hastinapur there are a lot of uh, flood plains uh, lakes for eco tourism in varanasi noida kanpur patna etc and wetlands for developing in into good potential uh, tourism places like upartha near prayagraj surhaha and etc there are also identified many historical uh, places for tourism for instance the 1857 uprising many of the things are on the river basin the in mirat the mangal pandey's village is there uh right down up to barakpur there are lot of areas where this thing happens so in this uh, uh, asadi kamad mahotsav so it's very appropriate that we take up this uh, these uh, uh, celebrations in this area and very importantly mythological circuits there are several ramayana and mahabharata uh, uh, circuits here which is possible uh, the nishan raja forts pandava caves uh, swarga roni peak pandukeshwar lake all these are part of uh, the 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 ganga basin so uh, there are these things can be connected so we also plan to have local fairs which can be promoted so there are a lot of uh, 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 ideas which have been identified in 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 uh, connection with the tourism ministry so dg tourism uh, and we had a meeting the other day and so we have identified many of the things which can be taken up so uh, as a part of the amrit uh, um, asadi amrit mahotsav all this will be taken up uh, and also uh, we want to have more people connected to the river so that it will also help us in in sustaining the development progress and the greening process we do for the ganga as well the give an income for the people around ganga so this is some of the um, uh, initiatives with the namami ganga is uh, taking up uh, planning to take up uh, as a part of the tourism in the next uh, uh, one year and definitely i look forward to cooperation from the ministry of uh, tourism and the, the ministry of uh, culture and also from all the uh, stakeholders associated uh, with this to take up the cleaning of ganga to ensure the overall and uh, clear normal ganga as well as a good a uh, tourism um, uh, activities uh, along the river which can help the people to make uh, 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 economic growth out of it and also help in sustaining the what effort which we are taking up for sustaining the clean ganga thanks a lot thank you ashok that was a very spirited uh... you know presentation and i'm sure viewers as we have moved from textiles to culture and to the rivers of india you can already see the kind of potential that india has for tourism and aren't you already getting spoiled for choice and also what is very interesting and why we brought the secretaries of the ministries today to speak to all of you is to let you share with the story of how india in the 21st century is becoming so very empowered and indeed why also we mentioned this year to be a very special year all the secretaries have mentioned that and i must therefore also remind all of you why is this particular rashtriya paryatan divas so special because ye saal hai azad ke amrit mahotsav ka 12 march 2021 ko maniya pradhan mantri ji ne flag off kiya tha azadi ke amrit mahotsav ki celebrations and all of us are trying to do that much more so much has happened in the last few years and therefore we are urging everyone that just do that little extra more to make sure 
that our dream of having the Atmanirbhar Bharat indeed gets fulfilled really, really quick. On this juncture, I am going to now go back to the Secretary from Environment, Forest and Climate Change, Srimati Leela Nandanji. Madam link had dropped off, but she's back here with us. Welcome, ma'am. And we look forward to how the story of environment, forest and wildlife weaves the story of tourism together. Thank you. Good afternoon uh, and uh, Namaskar to Honorable Minister Tourism, Culture and Donor my colleagues from central government ministries, distinguished participants of uh, today's uh, National Tourism Day, ladies and gentlemen. For me, it is something extra special to be speaking on the National Tourism Day, given the fact that I have spent time in the state government as well as in the government of India, working in the tourism sector. And therefore, it is especially relevant to say that as we talk about tourism products, we heard uh, Secretary Textile who elaborated upon the various arts and crafts and textiles of the country, which are unique and so attractive. Secretary Culture has spoken at length about the cultural heritage of India and how it is part and parcel of India's global tourism attraction. So too is the case with our environment and forest ministry and recognizing the fact that ecotourism is such an intrinsic part of the country's conservation program as well as tourism plans this ministry has come out with very detailed ecotourism guidelines, which were issued in October 2021. These are guidelines which really spell out the vision of the ministry of how we can develop, how we can join hands. All stakeholders can work together to tap the ecotourism potential of our country, given the fact that with 981 protected areas, and these include tiger reserves, uh, sanctuaries, marine zones, all of these go up to make the tremendous biological diversity of this country. The vision of this ministry is that we have to be able to involve all the stakeholders, right from the communities which work, which live in these areas and the ability for their livelihood opportunities to be strengthened through responsible and sustainable ecotourism to the entire vision of the tourism ministry as such to fully tap the ecotourism potential of the country. What we envisage is that there is a tremendous opportunity for us to join hands. And therefore, these guidelines, which we issued very recently, they work on the principle of very detailed plans coming out from the states by the Department of Tourism and the Department of Forests in the state government working together, where the community the district and the state are part and parcel of the entire ecotourism story. There will be many aspects to ecotourism that will have to be developed. The capacity building, the skilling requirements, the finance, the integration with many of the uh, startup initiatives of the country. And last but most important, the awareness about the need to preserve nature, to conserve, to protect, all our wildlife, our flora and fauna is something that has to be fully integrated with the ecotourism plans that are developed by the state governments. I'm sure that these 90, which just for the starters, we have uh, circulated in these guidelines, these 90 places that we've listed out, they cover various types of national parks and sanctuaries across the country, but these would be just the beginning. We could go forward and identify more such areas and given the fact that many of these are somewhat remote and far flung, how we can harness the power of technology to proper, properly capture the value inherent in these ecotourism sites and to bring them up to the discerning tourist will be part of the plan that has to be developed. The other part, which takes care of the conservation and protection aspect that is so intrinsic to this ministry's responsibilities, is also something that has to be mainstream. And therefore here I would particularly appeal to all the stakeholders of the tourism sector, the tour operators and, and all those who are part and parcel of the tourists experiential aspect. They have to be fully in tune with the country's objective of eliminating plastic, of reducing uh, pollution and controlling uh, the aspects of noise pollution, especially in the wildlife parks and sanctuaries. So this has to be integrated with 
the plans that are developed at the local level, district level, and state level. And I'm sure that once we come together on a platform, we could energize all the different stakeholders so that this vision of tourism being harnessed in its full potential can be realized by all of us working together. So let me conclude by saying that it is a pleasure for me to be a part of the webinar today on National Tourism Day. And certainly this ministry would be very happy to work forward and to work with the tourism ministry and all the stakeholders in tapping the tourism potential of our ecotourism sites, but in a manner which is responsible, sustainable, and inclusive. Thank you very much. Thank you, ma'am. It was indeed, uh, I think a lot of it came from the heart viewers. Don't you feel that? I think, uh, ma'am, the fact that you were here and therefore your linkage, and I am told by everybody here that part of your heart still lives in tourism. So, so it's been really wonderful hearing from you and looking forward to a lot of work together. Indeed, as ma'am said, not only are we supposed to take tourism forward, but how to do it in a sustainable way, how to make sure that the communities and everything else that nature has given us is not you know, desecrated as we go along. I think these very important points that ma'am has raised and we look forward that in this very special year, that we celebrate the Azadi Kamrat Mahotsav, we shall not only drive tourism, but do it in a sustainable manner. Thank you, ma'am, for your participation, and we look forward to a continued engagement with the Ministry of Environment, Forest, and Climate Change. Now, at this point, uh, we wanted to bring in a very different aspect, and we are switching over to a participant who Ministry supported last year, and he and five of his comrades, they are all from the army. These are people from the armed forces. And how the citizens of the country are coming together and are changing the India, the Naya Bharat, the 21st century India, the Atmanirbhar Bharat, all that. How the citizens are adding value to that is indeed a learning that all of us got when we sponsored this program led by Colonel Manoj Keshwar and his comrades. They not only went around the Ganga, but they did so by walking a foot, 5,530 kilometers of the Ganga walk. And what was so fascinating and why we thought it made a great idea from the tourism perspective to sponsor this part of their journey was that they started walking from 16 December, 2020 and finished the walk on 23rd June, 2021. And as they walked along the banks of the Ganga, the locals, the local villagers, the rural India, that group of people that would join in, the bad part of India, which became their host as they journeyed along, as they walked along, they made a lot of videos. We kept uh, pushing it out on social media and it became a phenomenal journey of going into the heart of India. And therefore it's a pleasure to welcome you today, Colonel Mike Keshwar, and before I call upon you to actually make your presentation, the group also made a short film on their journey. There's so much that they had to show. It cannot do justice in the time that we have here for them, but let's do whatever we can. So welcome Colonel Manoj Keshwar, and let's have the film first on Atulle Ganga Parikrama, Team NEGD. <clears throat> पावन नदी गंगा गौमुख से लेके और गंगा सागर तक लगभग ढाई हजार किलोमीटर का सफर तय करती है आप अगर गंगा के एक किनारे से क्लॉकवाइज गंगा सागर तक जाएं, गंगा सागर से क्रॉस करके दूसरे किनारे पर आएं, फिर वहां से गौमुख तक जाएं और गौमुख से क्रॉस करके फिर जिस जगह से आप चले थे वहां तक पहुंचे तो ये गंगा की परिक्रमा होगी यूजली ये क्लॉक होती है और आप कहीं से भी शुरू करके और कहीं भी खत्म कर सकते हैं इसकी कुल जो डिस्टेंस है वो लगभग 5,100 किलोमीटर का होगा
Mary GD. And now I call upon Colonel Mike Kishwar to kindly come up and make his presentation. Yeah, Namaskar, uh, Honorable Esteemed Minister G. Krishna Reddy Ji uh, and the co-panelists. It is such a proud moment to, uh, to showcase the amazing uh, journey we took on Ganga called Atulya Ganga Parikrama. Uh, in fact, it is a Vedic tradition. It used to happen uh, 1,000, 2,000 years back, uh, but somehow uh, we, we lost touch of it. And Yatras have always been uh, a great uh, motivator or kind of a journey we used to take uh, you know, all around our geographical entities was always a part of Indian culture, which uh, you see in Kavadiyas, you see it in the uh, uh, you know, Yatra of Narmada. Uh, but the Ganga Yatra somehow at some stage had lost steam. And uh, not many times in life you have a privilege to be blessed by Ma Ganga to finally come and uh, you know, restart this tradition uh, of Ganga Yatra. Uh, I am uh, on behalf of uh, millions of people who have faith in Atulya Ganga. Uh, I am presenting a few stories. Well, there are a million stories which can happen uh, around Ganga when you walk uh, every meter of it on both banks uh, from the glacier uh, to the Ganga Sagar. Uh, amazing journey. And all that uh, the secretaries, honorable secretaries have spoken. Well, uh, we were fortunate that we were able to weave uh, all those aspects in this one single yatra, which is called Atulya Ganga Parikrama. Uh, let me just uh, take you through a small presentation um, on this whole journey that we took. Um, I'll just share the screen. I'm assuming everybody is able to see this. So Atulya Ganga is a, is, a, is a 11 years veterans initiative, military veterans initiative, basically for Ganga rejuvenation and to um, synergize all the people uh, who are working towards rejuvenation of Ganga, who believe in Ganga, who, who believe in the Indianness of it. Um, uh, and so we aim to synergize all aspects, finally to deliver uh, uh, an amazing uh, and uh, clean and and Aviral and Nirmal Ganga to our future generations. The whole purpose uh, of this Atulya Ganga initiative uh, is to allow our future generations to have what we have had for centuries, an amazing Ganga river, which has magical properties, let me tell you, once we walk the whole thing. Now, let me tell you this, uh, we began with, there are eight epic long distance hikes around the world. India has none. So um, the Ganga Yatra or the Ganga Parikrama uh, definitely fills in that gap. Uh, and now we have one walk, which probably is, has got diversity, um, which is unparalleled. Now here is the summary of what we did. We um, started this Parikrama, uh, as Upinder has already said, on 16th of December at Prayagraj, went to Ganga Sagar, took a U-turn, came all the way to Gangotri, took a U-turn and came back to Priyagaj. That was the complete Parikrama. Um, anything ahead of Gangotri was not allowed because of uh, second wave uh, at its peak. But we had two to six permanent walkers, uh, 150 relay walkers, and over a lakh people joined us on various uh, stages of the Yatra and walked with us uh, for Ganga. So it was a 190 days, 5,530 kilometers, almost 5,000 cities, towns, and villages. Uh, about a million people we directly touched, who uh, we spoke to or uh, went, and an outreach uh, along with the partners like Atulya Ganga, Namami Gange, uh, Nehru Yuva Kendra. Uh, that outreach was uh, nothing less than about 10 million people. So, um, so this one single yatra of 190 days um, in the COVID period uh, really went ahead to to touch uh, the, the Indian populace. Uh, these are the three people who finished the entire meter by meter 5530 kilometers of yatra shagun tyagi rohit jat and indu uh, they finished this yatra completely rest of us did 90% 80% 60% 10% 5% but they all did join in uh, in this yatra let me take you through these aspects uh, when we stepped out of prayagraj this was one place where very clearly says what is ganga 
ये भारत की आत्मा है गंगा हमारी माता है दिस इज वॉट द इंडियन कल्चर बिलीव दैट द सोल ऑफ इंडिया इज थ्रू गंगा द सिविलाइजेशन ऑफ इंडिया इज थ्रू गंगा एंड इट्स आ मदर यू नो एज वी मूव लॉन्ग दे वॉज मैसेव लव ऑफ द पीपल समबडी प्रेजेंटेड अस गीता समबडी वेलकम्ड अस इन देयर होम्स Um, you know, uh, as if I don't know, we are messiahs of uh, you know Ganga, or personally sent by Ma Ganga uh, to visit these people. Mm. People organize cultural programs for us, and uh, the youth connected uh, with us through NCC. A uh, lot of uh, senior military officers took initiative to bring in the NCC to to come and walk with us and to learn why these veterans who have served their life on the borders are now moving around on Ganga and. Um, and that's a initiative a lot of these senior officers thought that as an example all our ncc youth should see so here we have general indra balan uh, general manjeet sabji bhai dholakia the famous uh, diamond exporter they all came and joined this idea of atulya ganga parikrama uh, in in lots and thousands and thousands of numbers people came and heard us on on this ganga there were amazing experiences of camping along ganga uh, they were uh, experience of this ganga doli which we had unique experience to uh, to follow her path from mukba uh, to gangotri and then the kapat or the doors of the uh, holy shrine were opened right in front of us and that's the day we reached gangotri so it was coincidental or was it ordained uh, but that's what happened as you go through um, bengal you you actually have the vibes of chaitanya mahaprabhu the bhakti moment and Uh, as you move around you you will see these people completely devoted to uh, chaitanya mahaprabhu's teaching and and the vibes of the bhakti movement then uh, this is one very simple thing i explained to some sadhus that you know we taking this parikrama and they all bowed to my bonnet of my car you know uh, to 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 have that faith and this tells you how amazing faith people have in in ma ganga uh, they were unique experiences like uh, the one you see here uh, from the kingfisher catching its morning uh, catch uh, to uh, seal guys and foxes and and you, you see all of them routinely uh, you see this ancient irrigation system in which people are getting the water to their fields to some uh, you know ancient systems uh, there are initiatives and stories of people who are on the ganga belt uh the ig sunit rai uh, has created a shorya one basically to make sure that the ganga doesn't erode the banks they have created forests there um and of course people keep warm in the morning through these uh, the river in in bihar and up has got diaras they like islands within the within the ganga and there are uh, women and men who go uh, to do their daily uh, agriculture and stuff there Uh, and these are the women bringing back some firewood uh, back to their homes from the diara uh, and of course these are daily chores which we do the children have their own uh, transportation system and this local food so this this uh, sugarcane which i am having is uh, one of the softest sugarcane you ever probably have and it's grown in ganga sagar island uh, and it's really amazing uh, well uh, the holy bath is 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 a custom which is followed right at 4 o'clock in the morning along ganga uh, then there's rural joy of uh, making a living this on the right you see is uh, is the jaggery of khajur the date uh, which is which which is carrying and uh, on the left you see of course spring onions being taken to the market for selling there are artisans on the way uh, you know uh, you see this uplas to the left which are very distinct from the round uh, uplas we have here in rest of india um then there are artisans uh, of uh, these are they are selecting threads for sarees the harmonium makers the murti shilpkars of uh, bengal now i'm going to take you through couple of stories which are one is this uh, revival of great adjutant straw uh, you know deepak singh ji and uh, arvind mishra ji all these people have taken great initiative to bring back the garuda so called uh, and from a population of about 70 in i think 2006 they are now 700 uh, and, and and it's the community which got involved uh, to save this uh, this amazing uh, bird 
uh, and now Bhagalpur area uh, we found was full of birds, all kinds of cranes and birds and bird life uh, can be seen there and amazing efforts by the government and the local communities there uh, who joined hands to bring back the great adjutant stock. Second story is about Murshidabad. Murshidabad is like a Netflix series. Uh, from Murshidabad right till Ganga Sagar, there is a traitor's trail. You know, uh, and, and there's something as a circuit which must be developed. There is already structures. It's just have to be, uh, you know, done up again. Uh, and, and this is a story I'm not going to say here because of lack of time. But I feel Murshidabad deserves an attention, which is, which is going to bring back a whole lot of tourism in the uh, central and northern uh, Bengal. Now, back to these long distance walks. I would pr propose to, to all the people here that we must start a walk from Gangotri to Ganga Sagar. On the day Ma Ganga is brought down from uh, Gangotri to Mukba, the, the, the place where she stays in the in winters, uh, and we walk, walk down all the way to Ganga Sagar and finish it on Makar Sankranti Mela Day. You know, uh, So this is going to be a 108 days, 2,600 kilometers walk, which probably is going to match and put us on the map of great long distance walks. And, and they may be having a single kind of a thing. We have glaciers, plains, rivers, uh, Sundarbans, uh, and the ocean. Uh, and, and we have about five states and five kind of cuisines which people are going to experience. So there's amazing stuff which can be done by this one single uh, proposal which I'm making on establishing Grand Ganga Yatra. Um, this year, we, we're cycling down the Ganga, just, just for your information. And we're going to start on 1st of March and go all the way to Hatia. Hatia is in Bangladesh. Uh, we will cycle this time. Uh, and go back to Ganga and do this uh, this amazing journey again. Uh, and for 11 years, we'll keep going back, sometimes by boat, sometimes by kayaks, sometimes by cycle, and sometimes by walking. But we will be back to Ganga. Uh, in the end, what is left for me is on behalf of uh, Atulia Ganga team and, and all of the people who, who like the idea of Atulia Ganga, the Ministry of Tourism, Incredible India, Rupinder Brarji, Minakshi ji, who, uh, she was there when we started this. Uh, and Namami Gange, uh, Rajiv Ranjanji, uh, for an awesome support which made this whole thing possible. Uh, thank you. Uh, Atulia Ganga Cyclothon is the event of the year for us. Uh, and we look forward to your continued support. Uh, I'm going to stop sharing now. And since there are no questions, we move over to the next speaker, probably. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Colonel Keshwar. In fact, uh, I'm sure viewers, you agree that through this little, you know, just a few snippets, India came alive, the beauty, the splendor of India. And the best part is the people of India, the rural India that we saw was so absolutely incredible. And that's why they call it Atulya Ganga Parikrama. And what we always say is, Dekhye aur Dikhaye, Apna Sundar Atulya Bharat. Indeed, India is so incredible. Now, moving on from this point and uh, keeping the time in, you know, there are questions, uh, Manoj, but then one has to move on. So I'm going to bring in the next speaker at this point. And again, the idea behind the variety that we are bringing to you speakers today or speakers is that if India has to move forward, all the citizens have to join hands to move forward. Jan Bhagidari. Aur usi ke saath badhega aage, 21 sadi ka naya Bharat. And we have, therefore, representing that spirit of India today, none other than Shri Anand Mahindra, chairman of the Mahindra Group, who's joining us from Dubai. But he said there was no way he was not going to join. So welcome, uh, Shri Mahindra. It's a pleasure to have you. I'm sure most of us know you and know about you. You head the Mahindra Group, which has been literally powering the tractors in India empowering therefore the rural India truly, the agriculture of India and creating an Atma Nirbhar Bharat. I was reading on him and a very interesting snippet that what car does he drive? He drives the Mahindra B. Is that even a guess? Well, that's vocal for local. And he's actually been educated out of India. He did go to Harvard, but that's the Indian today, representing the spirit and powering and empowering and capacity building and providing jobs across India. And also for us in tourism, he's a fantastic brand ambassador because almost every day on his Twitter handle, you find one place of India showcased. So he just made all the sense for us to have him today to share his thoughts on what does he think of incredible India and how do we take tourism forward in the 21st century. Welcome, Mr. Anand Mahindra. 
Thank you very much for those very kind words and a good afternoon to all of you. Honorable Minister of Tourism, Culture and Donor, Sri G. Kishan Reddy, Secretary, Ministry of Tourism, Sri Arvind Singh, the distinguished secretaries of ministries of textile, culture, environment, and forest. Now, when I look back at my childhood, I think there were two things uh, that created my wanderlust and my love of travel. First of all, my mother used to have a habit of collecting souvenirs from her travels. She collected almost everything, postcards from every location she visited, menu cards of local restaurants, monogram paper napkins, tourist brochures, and all kinds of miscellaneous things like that. And then she would make a scrapbook out of almost every trip. And my two sisters and I would eagerly wait for her to complete these, and then we'd pour over them again and again. The second element was that I attended a boarding school in Uti, in Tamil Nadu, and camping and trekking were part of the educational process. So once again, this reinforced my enjoyment of new places, particularly those that were off the beaten track. So it wasn't surprising that uh, during my teenage years, just after I finished school, I began hitchhiking along with one of my college buddies. And frankly, it wasn't surprising that my parents didn't try to stop me from doing that, given their own love for adventure. Most often, we'd take off on impulse on a weekend and hitch rides from Mumbai to Pune and beyond in Maharashtra. Now, you have to recognize, of course, that those were the days of innocence before the onset of terrorism and strong security concerns and, of course, pandemics. So people wouldn't hesitate to give us rides in their Premier Padmanis or Hindustan ambassadors. There were only two choices then. And very often, friendly truck drivers would tell us to jump on board onto their cargo platforms. And I distinctly remember the most colorful memory, or maybe I should say sensory memory, was hitching a ride on a truck with a cargo of beedies, with the strong aroma of the cargo. And I think at the end of the trip, I suspect we might have inhaled the equivalent of several packs of beedies. But I'll never forget that memory and that aroma. Now, when I was in college in the US, as you observed, um, in 1975, I took a leave of absence for a whole semester to do a photography project. And I traveled all around India taking state, uh, state transport buses. I spent Diwali and Amritsar at the Golden this Kara, which I still wear. And I was on a bus to Madurai when the great leader Kamraj expired. And I remember witnessing the profound almost uncontrollable grief that the uh, citizens of the state were undergoing. You got a sense, I got a deep understanding of India and its people from that trip. But let me fast forward to more recent years when I began to afford uh, much more comfortable holidays as it were. And my family and I have experienced premium innovative experiences that Indian hoteliers have devised. So I've really seen both ends of the experience spectrum when it comes to traveling in our great country. And I think that illustrates one important fact. India is for everyone. It has incredible travel experiences for people, both on modest budgets, as well as for those looking for the height of luxury. And this idea of comprehensiveness, completeness extends even to the range of terrain and climate that India offers. You can indulge in skiing trips in magnificent Gulmarg, or you can take splendid boat rides in the backwaters of steamy tropical Kerala. So therefore, seen from the perspective of a travel menu, as it were, I think India is more of a continent than a country. And it's therefore no surprise that the tourism, is, tourism industry generated, I think, about 6.8% of India's GDP in 2019. It supported 8% of total employment. So it's a major growth driver. But there's one more powerful benefit of domestic tourism. It's not just a potential employment generator and money spinner, but it's a very, very powerful vehicle for national integration. Uh, let me share one of my favorite anecdotes. When we opened the um, Goa Resort on Varka Beach of Club Mahindra, I was there for the opening. And I remember lolling about in the swimming pool, and I could see that on one end, there was a boisterous Punjabi family 
The, the other end, there was another family from the south speaking in Tamil. There was a local Goan couple, and there was a family that had come all the way from Kashmir. So the fact is that when I looked at this, I remember telling the head of the resort, I said, can we start some kind of Facebook for Club Mahendra visitors? Can we create some kind of online connectivity between alumni of visits to the hotels? Because I just had this wonderful sense that if they all kept together, what if the, all those families in that pool kept together all these years, they kept in touch? Maybe their children could even get married. Who knows? There would be such a strong knitting together of this country. But anyway, enough of those kinds of idealistic um, speculations. Let's speak about international inbound tourism, and that is overseas visitors to India. Because we have to recognize that even though our tourism competitiveness position rose from something like 65th in 2013 to 34th in 2018, much smaller and much less diverse countries still outstrip us. In 2019, we had less than the number of tourists who visited Thailand or even Vietnam. Now, there's been much brainstorming and analysis of how to increase India's market share of global travelers. And, you know, many options and great ideas have been generated. As developed countries struggle with costs and price rises, I believe that major windows of opportunity are going to open up for new kinds of specialty tourism, medical tourism, wellness and meditation tourism, tourism that involves participating in environmentally friendly rural lifestyles. And all of these have great potential for tourism. But today, this event gives a clue of one other kind of differentiated or specialty tourism that India does have a competitive advantage in. And I'd like to call it artisanal tourism, where tourists can visit clusters of habitations where perhaps just one special art or craft has thrived. And hence, hence the whole village or city is defined by that specialization. Such clusters are frankly a treasure trove, not just for shopping, but also for the study and understanding of history, the evolution of society and economics. Channapatna in Karnataka for toys, Badhoi for carpets, Pipli for applique handicrafts, and as we see today, Pochampali for beautiful ikat fabrics. In fact, may I give my compliments to Pochampali for winning this prestigious classification by the United Nations and may it lead to greater recognition and prosperity for its inhabitants. So in conclusion, ladies and gentlemen, when you put all of this rich diversity of experiences together, I think we can claim something that no one can challenge. India is not a country, nor perhaps is it just a continent as I suggested earlier. India is a state of mind. And I say to everyone in the world, that if you allocate at least some part of your life to enter into that state of mind, your life will be greatly richer. Thank you. Thank you. So that was Mr. Anand Mahindra, a Padma Bhushan awardee of 2020, which is the highest uh, you know, civilian honor that is given in India. And we can clearly make out why. You know, the, the way you've showcased out India and also given a lot of homework many miles before I sleep is an, a date I think we can attach to your very emotional uh, address to all of us. And thank you for your lovely ideas. And I'm sure we will be partnering with you and you will be helping us to take incredible India more forward and much more be seen by the world. You are known for putting some very interesting things on your handles and please continue to do so and be a great brand ambassador for Incredible India. Thank you, Mr. Mahindra. Moving further, dear friends, uh, we've heard from the government, we've heard with an army representative who actually went across uh, and walked along Ganga and will cycle this year. We've heard from a very leading private sector setup that is engaged. So we are seeing how India is evolving in the 21st century, truly Ajan Bhagidari coming together here. And now as we move forward, and before I invite uh, Honorable Union Minister for his address, I'm going to request him to today on a very special day of the National Tourism Day in the year of Azadi Kamrit Mahotsav as we celebrate 75 years of independent India to kindly release the 75 incredible sites that you could visit in India, there are many more. It was a challenge to bring some of them together. We've tried our best. There are 40 UNESCO heritage sites. And as we see so much else to showcase, and therefore we are bringing you a book. 
And we are also bringing you the annual digital calendar, which is the incredible India Azadi Ka Amrut Mahotsav calendar. And we shall be sending it across to everyone. Please help us to promote it and share with everybody else. But currently, I will request Honorable Minister Shiriji Kishan Reddy ji to kindly release both the book and the calendar. Team NEGD, could we assist Honorable Minister, sir? Could we request you to, uh, you know, if we see all, we'll be spending a lot of time, but we are going to share with everyone on our Insta handles on incredibleindia.org, which is our website. We will have it on all our social media handles. So please do watch it, share it, and take it forward. And are we uh, able to upload the calendar, Team NEGD? Dear viewers, this is a special calendar dedicated this year to sites that have relevance from the independence movement perspective. However, this is just a small vignette. The entire India, how it came together to fight against the colonial rule is for all of us to know and read and to be so proud of. And when in Delhi, do not forget to visit the National War Memorial, which has been inaugurated by the Honorable Prime Minister on 25th February 2019. And currently, as you all might be aware, just two days back, the Amar Jawan Jyoti, the Agni has been merged in the new National War Memorial, Perfect. because this takes care of all those soldiers who have martyred their lives, who have laid down their lives for all of us to live today with our heads held high in an independent India. So these are some of the, there we see Netaji, whose statue was very recently inaugurated by the Honorable Prime Minister at India Gate. And that is a Velour Fort in Tamil Nadu. And that's the INA Memorial. Merposa. And the last one, the National War Memorial of which I just mentioned. Thank you very much. Thank you to the Honorable Union Minister, Shri Ji Kishan Reddy Ji, for unveiling both the book and the incredible sites. Now, viewers, we are here to share with you the keynote address today of our special chief guest, Shri G. Kishan Reddy Ji, the Honorable Union Minister for Tourism, Culture, and Development of Northeastern Region. Sir has taken over as the oh. Union Minister for these three portfolios <laughs> in July this year. Before that, he was a Minister of State for Home. And I must share with you a personal uh, observation that Honorable Minister Sir has been focusing so much on convergence, on bringing the competencies and the niche work that each ministry is doing, and has therefore been bringing together work of petroleum, the minorities ministry, the road transport, the environment, and you name it. It's, it's been so much of learning for all of us in the ministry, being so ably led by our Union uh, Minister Shri Ji Kishan Reddy Ji, sir, everybody is looking forward to your words of wisdom. Welcome, sir. Uh, Danyawad. Sukku. Namaskar. Sri Anu Mahindra Ji, Chairman Mahindra Bhima Company, Colonel Manoj Keshwar Ji, Tulia Ganga Parikrama, Secretary 
Minister of Tourism, Sri Arvind Singh Ji, Sri Upendra Prasad Singh Ji, Secretary, Minister of Excellence, Sri Govind Mohan Ji, Secretary, Minister of Culture, Srimati Lina Nandan Ji, Secretary, Minister of Environment, Director General, National Mission for Clean Data, Mr. Kamala Vardhan Rao Varu, DG, Tourism Government of India, Srimati Rupendra Bharati, Mr. Tourism, सबको नमस्कार आज 25 जनवरी राष्ट्रीय पर्यटन दिवस की सभी देशवासियों को मैं संदर्भ में शुभकाम देना चाहूंगा आज पेश करने के लिए और कल कैलिंग का तैयारी इंडियन रिपोर्ट के लिए आजाद का बहुत बहुत सारा कार्यक्रम कर रहे हैं इस समय को एक तीन कार्यक्रम कर रहे हैं इस तरह सारे विश्व कोविड महामारी से लड़ रहा है इस महामारी से वैसे तो विश्व में हर क्षेत्र को प्रभावित किया है लेकिन सबसे ज्यादा प्रभावित होने वाला क्षेत्र पर्यटन है साथ ही और एक खुशी की बात है इस कोविड महामारी से देश के जनता को बचाने के लिए आज भारत में सबसे बड़ा कोविड का टीकाकरण देश में हो रहा है लगभग हंड्रेड एंड सिक्सटी कंट्रीज इसमें कोविड में हो रहे हैं मगर उसमें ज्यादा टीकाकरण सिर्फ भारत में हुआ है अभी भी होने वाले हैं और मेडिकल इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर को मजबूत करने में करते हुए सभी भारत के जनता को यूनिटी करते हुए हम आगे बढ़ रहे और हमें इस कोविड को देखते हुए इस 2022 में पर्यटन को अच्छे मजबूत करना अच्छा शुरुआत से ये साल आगे बढ़ना चाहिए ऐसा पूरे दुनिया के भर के लोग सोचे थे और दुर्भाग्यपूर्ण से कोविड तीसरा वेव के कारण फिर बहुत बड़ा झटका टूरिस्ट सेक्टर में मिला है मित्रों भारत दुनिया का सबसे बड़ा लोकप्रिय पर्यटन स्थलों में एक है पर्यटन के लिए भारत के पास अनेक वास्तुशिल्प स्थल हजारों वर्ष पुराने विरासत महान सांस्कृति आज भारत में है अलग अलग संग्रहालय समुद्री उद्यान प्राचीन गुफाएं 
नदियां समुद्र और विशाल मठ मंदिरों के श्रृंखला भारत में आपको हर जगह दिखता है जो दुनिया के पर्यटकों को आकर्षित कर सकते हैं मित्रों 2014 के एक अध्ययन में पाया गया भारत में पर्यटन के क्षेत्र में सबसे तेजी से प्रगति हो सकता है इतना ही नहीं रोजगार देने में भी सबसे बड़ा साधन पर्यटन है 2019 का एक आंकड़ा यह भी बताता है 30 परसेंट रोजगार पर्यटन से मिल सकता है 2015 और 2019 के बीच में विश्व कार्तिक मंच पे यात्रा और पर्यटन मित्रों अंतरराष्ट्रीय पर्यटन के लिए यात्रा को आसान बनाने के लिए पर्यटन मंत्रालय ने अनगण्य योजना शुरू किया है जिसके तहत पांच लाख पर्यटकों को मुफ्त में इस कोविड के दृष्टिकोण में मुफ्त वीजा देने के लिए निर्णय हुआ है टूरिस्ट ऑपरेटर्स को भी एंकरेजमेंट करना और भारत सरकार ने लगभग 170 से अधिक देशों के लिए अपनी ई पर्यटक वीजा देने का निर्णय और वीजा नीति को उदार बनाने का निर्णय किया है जहां पर्यटन की संख्या अधिक है वहां पर हर मंत्रालय में आज अलग अलग काम कर रहे हैं मैं बताते हुए गर्व महसूस करता हूं आज टूरिज्म डिपार्टमेंट भारत सरकार के जितने भी डिपार्टमेंट्स हैं अलग अलग डिपार्टमेंट्स मिलकर काम कर रहे हैं उसमें सी रेवेशन के द्वारा जो एयरपोर्ट्स हो जो फ्लाइट्स हो उड़ान के फ्लाइट्स हो और अच्छे सुविधा अलग अलग जगह पैसा दे सकते हैं इसके बारे में एक एक्शन प्लान भारत सरकार रेलवे में आपको बहुत खुशी होगा लगभग थ्री थाउजेंड फाइव हंड्रेड कोचेस टूरिज्म के लिए अलोकेट किया गया इस कोचेस के द्वारा अलग अलग सर्कुलट स्पेशल ट्रेन प्राइवेट सेक्टर में देने के लिए निर्णय किया है अभी रेलवे मंत्रालय ने रामायण सर्किट हो बुद्ध सर्किट हो अलग अलग सर्किट्स पर ट्रेन चला रहे हैं इसमें रेलवे का बहुत बड़ा टूरिज्म के दृष्टिकोण में मिलेगा उसके साथ साथ विदेश डिपार्टमेंट के द्वारा एक भारत स्पेस भारत के नाम पर टूरिज्म कल्चर एजुकेशन डिपार्टमेंट मिलकर काम करने का निर्णय किया है के स्टूडेंट्स को नौजवानों को एक प्रांत से दूसरे प्रांत को ले जाना उस प्रांत का टूरिज्म का दृष्टिकोण से लोगों को अवगत कराना के साथ नेशनल इंटीग्रेशन का भी बड़ा बड़ा इसमें योगदान होगा उसके साथ एजुकेशन डिपार्टमेंट के द्वारा स्कूल से लेकर यूनिवर्सिटी तक हर क्लास में हर स्कूल में एक टूरिस्ट क्लब खोलना चाहिए ऐसा भी विचार विमर्श हो रहे अभी भी कुछ गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया के एजुकेशन इंस्टीट्यूशन इस ऑलरेडी आदेश दिया है टूरिस्ट क्लब हर स्कूल में गठन करने का उनके द्वारा बच्चों में छात्रों में नौजवानों में एक टूरिस्ट दृष्टिकोण से उनके करना उनके उत्साह बढ़ाना उनके द्वारा उनके परिवार को उनके रिश्तेदारों को उनके गांव वालों को उनके एरिया मोहला वालों को टूरिस्ट दृष्टिकोण से एक अवेयरनेस लाना चाहिए इस दृष्टिकोण से 
टूरिस्ट क्लब्स का हर एजुकेशन इंस्टीट्यूशन में खड़ा करना चाहिए ऐसा एक निर्णय हुआ है उसके साथ साथ मैं रोडवेज के बारे में अभी नेशनल हाईवे रोडवेज जो है जितने भी नेशनल हाईवे पे बाई रोड जाते हैं टूरिस्ट उसके लिए पूरा इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर बनाना रोड साइड अम्यूनिटीज रोड साइड अम्यूनिटीज को ठीक तरीके से इंटरनेशनल स्टैंडर्ड पे करना चाहिए ऐसा भी एक काम शुरू हो गया उसके साथ वाटर वेस्ट का मिनिस्ट्री एक क्रूज टूरिज्म के लिए पोर्ट्स एंड इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर बढ़ाने के लिए और काम तेजी गति से आगे बढ़ रहे और इसके साथ साथ अभी अभी फॉरेस्ट मिनिस्ट्री का सेक्रेटरी बताए मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ एनवायरमेंट एंड फॉरेस्ट का उसके द्वारा वाइल्ड लाइफ का टूरिज्म बढ़ाना ग्रीन टूरिज्म बढ़ाना वाटरफॉल्स जितने भी वाटरफॉल्स भारत में है दुनिया में अच्छी इतना वाटरफॉल्स आपको दिखते हैं और उसको अच्छे पब्लिसिटी लाना लोगों के सामने ले जाना डोमेस्टिक टूरिस्ट हो इंटरनेशनल टूरिस्ट हो सबके सामने भारत का जो अलग अलग जगह जो वाइल्ड लाइफ टूरिज्म हो वाटरफॉल्स हो ग्रीन टूरिज्म का हो सकता है उसके पूरा प्रपागंडा करना उसके साथ साथ मैं डोनर मिनिस्ट्री से भी टूरिज्म मिनिस्ट्री मिलकर काम कर रहे हैं क्योंकि नॉर्थ ईस्ट का जो आठ प्रांत है उसमें बहुत बड़ा काम हो सकता है टूरिज्म सेक्टर में मगर उसका कोई पोटेंशियल अपना अपने रिकग्नाइज नहीं किया है इसके कारण से उस प्रांतों के जितने भी नेचुरल जो हिल्स है वाटरफॉल्स है सीनरी है वो विदेशों से अगर कंपेयर किए तो भारत में बहुत बड़ा टूरिज्म पोटेंशियल नॉर्थ ईस्ट में हो सकता है इस दृष्टिकोण से नॉर्थ ईस्ट का टूरिज्म को बढ़ावा देना उसका रोजगार क्रिएट करना एम्प्लॉयमेंट क्रिएट करना नॉर्थ ईस्ट को और दुनिया में टूरिज्म जो सेक्टर में बहुत बड़ा रोल के द्वारा हम बता सकते हैं उसके साथ साथ जो एक्सटर्नल अफेयर्स मिनिस्ट्री है उसको भी हम जोड़ा है उनके द्वारा विदेशों में जितने भी अपना एम्बेसी है एम्बेसी के द्वारा फॉरेन टूरिस्ट को एंकरेजमेंट करना चाहिए प्रॉपर मार्केट शेयर इन ग्लोबल टूरिज्म के अंदर भारत को कैसा मिले भारत का जो टूरिज्म का जितने भी डिस्टिनेशन है उसके बाद में विदेशों में कैसा प्रचार हो प्रचार हो उसके लोगों को कैसे पोटेंशियल टूरिज्म पोटेंशियल को भारत को ला सकते हो उसके दृष्टिकोण से हर एम्बेसी में एक टूरिस्ट का ऑफिसर का नियुक्त किया गया उसके द्वारा अभी भारत सरकार एक्सटर्नल अफेयर मिनिस्टर के द्वारा इसका काम शुरुआत हुआ है उसके साथ साथ अभी आजाद का अमृत महोत्सव का बहुत बड़ा एक उत्सव चल रहा है देश भर में लगभग ट्वेंटी थ्री अगस्त पंद्रह तक एक कार्यक्रम चलेगा इसके लिए मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ कल्चर से मिलकर बहुत बड़ा कार्यक्रम टूरिज्म डिपार्टमेंट के द्वारा काम कर रहे हैं अभी जितने भी टूरिज्म कल्चर के एस आई के गवर्नमेंट्स हो यूनेस्को पार्टी साइट्स हो उसका साइटन को जितना भी हम विकास करने के लिए इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर बढ़ाव देने के लिए प्रयास करें उसके साथ साथ जो लगभग फोर थाउजेंड तक जो एस एनवायरमेंट्स है उसमें जितने भी ज्यादा फुटफॉल है लगभग वन थाउजेंड मॉर्मेंट को आइडेंटिफाई करके अडॉप्ट योर हेरिटेज के नाम पर जो प्राइवेट सेक्टर में जितने भी कारपोरेट ऑफिस है जो प्राइवेट सेक्टर में जो टूरिस्ट को एंकरेजमेंट करने के लिए लोग आगे आगे आते हैं उन लोगों के सहायता द्वारा उस टूरिस्ट डिस्टिनेशन को विकास करने के लिए निर्णय किया है उसमें आने वाला दिन में लगभग फाइव हंड्रेड से वन थाउजेंड तक टूरिस्ट डिस्टिनेशन को अडॉप्टेज के नाते सी के द्वारा कारपोरेट सेक्टर कंपनी हो व्यक्ति हो 
उसको आ जाने के लिए हम एंकरेज करना चाहिए ऐसा निर्णय हुआ है ये लोगों के द्वारा उस डिस्टिनेशन पे अच्छे फैसिलिटीज करना उसके डिस्टिनेशन पे इंटरनेशनल स्टैंडर्ड पे व्यवस्था रखना उसका अच्छे देखभाल करना ये बहुत बड़ा चैलेंज है क्योंकि भारत अपना बहुत बड़ा ये टूरिस्ट डेस्टिनेशन का जो एस है का मार्मेंट्स है दुनिया में आपको इतना अच्छे मार्मेंट्स हिस्टोरिकल मार्मेंट्स दुनिया में आपको दिखते हैं इस दृष्टिकोण से ये भी काम हो रहे हैं उसके साथ साथ जो होम मिनिस्ट्री के द्वारा डिफेंस के द्वारा बॉर्डर टूरिज्म को कैसा प्रमोट हो एडवेंचर टूरिज्म को कैसा प्रमोट हो दोनों को डिपार्टमेंट द्वारा ये काम आगे आने वाले दिन में होगा उसके लिए भी भारत सरकार निर्णय लिया है उसके साथ साथ हम ऐसी अलग अलग डिपार्टमेंट का कौन सा कौन सा डिपार्टमेंट टूरिज्म दृष्टिकोण से कैसा योगदान दे सकते हैं कैसा जोड़ सकते हैं आने वाले टूरिस्ट को कैसा इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर देकर फैसिलिटीज कर सकते हैं इस दृष्टि में भारत सरकार चर्चा कर रहे हैं उसके साथ साथ स्टेट गवर्नमेंट्स भी यूटीज भी पूरा भागीदारी करें पूरे लोगों को इन्वॉल्व करके इस टूरिज्म सेक्टर को भारत में आने वाले दिन में एक दुनिया भर में एक अच्छे टूरिज्म डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन हो कैसा कड़क करना चाहिए इसके विषय पर चर्चा करके पूरे स्टेट गवर्नमेंट्स को मिलकर काम कर रहे अपने बहुत बड़ा अपने एक सेक्टर है जो कल्चर जो फेस्टिवल्स होते हैं जितने फेस्टिवल्स भारत में होते हैं वो नॉर्थ ईस्ट का फेस्टिवल हो ट्राइबल का फेस्टिवल हो रिलीजियस फेस्टिवल हो कल्चरल फेस्टिवल हो बहुत बड़ा फेस्टिवल भारत में होता है इस फेस्टिवल को भी प्रॉपर ब्रांडिंग करना प्रॉपर पब्लिसिटी देना प्रॉपर ब्रांडिंग करके उसको दुनिया भर में लोगों को बताना उसके द्वारा लोगों को अट्रैक्ट टूरिस्ट को अट्रैक्ट करना एक हमारा हमारा सामने एक बड़ा चैलेंज है उसके साथ साथ जितने भी स्टेक होल्डर्स है वो टूर्स ट्रेवलर्स ऑपरेटर्स हो होटलियर्स हो नहीं तो अलग 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 सेक्टर का जो इस टूरिस्ट सेक्टर में काम करते हैं सभी लोगों को मिलजुल कर आगे ले जाना चाहिए जब भी ये टूरिस्ट डेस्टिनेशन भारत एक नंबर वन डेस्टिनेशन बन सकता है इस दृष्टिकोण से हम काम कर रहे हैं मैं फिर एक बार सभी इस नेशनल टूरिज्म डेज पर सभी लोगों को मैं शुभकामनाएं देना चाहता हूं और आने वाले 26 जनवरी जो कल होगा रिपब्लिक डे उसके संदर्भ में भी शुभकामनाएं देना चाहता हूं एडवांस और आजाद का अमृत महोत्सव जब 23 अगस्त पूरा खत्म होगा इस आजाद का अमृत महोत्सव संदर्भ में टूरिज्म डिपार्टमेंट के द्वारा इतने जो डिस्टिनेशन भारत में पूरा जगह एक ठीक तरीके से इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर बढ़ाव देते हुए अपने कल्चर अपने टूरिस्ट डिस्टिनेशन सेंटर्स दुनिया भर में एक आकर्षित देश बनकर हम आगे बढ़ना चाहिए इस शब्दी के साथ में फिर एक बार सभी लोगों को इस अच्छे कार्यक्रम जो आज किया है इस वर्चुअल मूड पे मैं इस संदर्भ में सभी लोगों को धन्यवाद देते हुए जय हिंद धन्यवाद सर एंड एज यू कैन सी व्यूअर्स फ्रॉम मंत्री जी एड्रेस and that what a visionary minister he is for all his three portfolios talking of convergence bringing the competencies of each ministry forward so that tourism which is truly an amalgamation of everything that incredible india is all about how we should empower tourism by the work of all of the ministries so thank you so much for providing a visionary leadership and aapke protsahan aur margdarshan ke liye bahut bahut dhanyawad sir aaj aap hamare sath jude is karyakram mein isi se hame sabhi ko bahut encouragement milegi aur jitne bhi jude hain hamare sath rajya sarkar ke log bhi उनको भी बहुत ज्यादा कॉन्फिडेंस आएगा कि हम कितनी तेजी से आगे बढ़ रहे हैं सो वी आर कमिंग टू द एंड ऑफ द प्रोग्राम व्यूअर्स एंड इट्स टाइम फॉर मी टू आउट टू एवरीबडी हु मेड दिस प्रोग्राम पॉसिबल 
somebody without whom we cannot ever do whatever we've been doing ever since COVID struck us in March 2020. And we all had to go virtual. The platforms like these are what has connected everybody and has brought to us so much that technology can actually do. And therefore, the team NEGD, led by the CEO Abhishek Singh, thank you so much for providing the platform and for providing MyGovs promotional platform also as we empower ourselves through technology and take tourism forward. I want to thank all the state governments who have joined in today and have supported us through the year in so many ways of bringing incredible India. Because at the end of the day, India lives in its states and it lives with its people. And thank you very much to all the secretaries today who have joined in to make this program a huge success. Secretaries from Culture, Textile, National Mission of Ganga, and also all the stakeholders, all our associations, and the team in the Ministry of Tourism led by our secretary, Shri Arvind Singh Ji, which has actually made it possible for us to bring together the publicity team, which put together the booklet and the calendar and most of all, and most importantly, and I want to thank each person who has supported us in these difficult times has come together. So every single, not only the citizen of India, but people from overseas who've been watching our programs, who've been continuously supporting us in bringing the Deko Apna Desh initiative forward, in bringing the, the lesser known places of India forward. So to each of you who has joined in today and has made it possible for us to keep on going with the spirit of so much else to be seen and therefore wishing everybody once again a very very happy national tourism day rashtriya paryatan divas 2022 and yes also wishing everybody a very very happy republic day tomorrow as the republic of india powers itself forward in the 21st century thank you everyone for being here with us supporting us dekhiye aur dikhaiye apna sundar atulya bharat Namaskar. No